All right. I think we're in for a treat, folks. Uh, we're going to go through a whole bunch of stuff today, so just hang hang with me, and we'll get through all of it. Um, this is about uh, treasure signs, symbols, marks, and petroglyph maps, and uh, I, there's some preliminary stuff to get through. Um, you know, like and subscribe if you like this stuff. I never say that, but I guess I need to. Um, what you're looking at here on the screen right now is J. Frank Doby's book, uh, Coronado's Children, which um, is where a lot of, you know, symbols and their definitions come from. Um, people, you know, pretty much take uh, or steal or borrow or plagiarize or whatever you want to call it, borrow heavily from, from this particular reference. So um, you'll see it repeated in things like Berry Storms, uh, Thunder, Thunder Gods, uh, Gold, and stuff like that. So um, the things holding the page down here, um, the very bottom one is a little Dore bar uh, I found with the metal detector. The middle thing is uh, copper petrified wood uh, from uh, our claim in Cuba, New Mexico. And then the top is uh, a big assay button uh, of lead. There's probably some gold and silver in there from some mines down south. So these are three pages of, uh, of Dobie. And, um, you know, that's a good original reference. Uh, I think he did pretty careful research and, you know, he predates a lot of other stuff. So we'll go through a bunch of regular symbols and everything, but then I've got just a ton of pictures, um, you know, all taken by me <laughs> um, in the field here in the Southwest, uh, mostly New Mexico and Arizona, maybe a little bit of Colorado. And so we'll get through some of the kind of the, the cartoon drawing stuff that most people have and into some more interesting things, which is, uh, you know, actual pictures from the field. Um, real quick, I want to give uh, kind of a shout out to some other channels that I think are similar and have good content. So Treasure Exploration and Research. Uh, it's a, uh, Rick's a Utah guy. And, uh, you know, he actually gets out there and does stuff. And, you know, a lot of his material is, is his, his own. So just, just like I try to do, not copied from somewhere else, but actually his own stuff from the field. And um, so another one, uh, another Utah, I think, uh, is Basinite. And um, he kind of just had um, content that was kind of with music and words uh, reading, but, you know, he talks in his videos now, so it's a lot easier to sort of listen in and look back and forth between work and, and uh, that as sort of background information and pause it and rewind if there's something super interesting. So check those two guys out. I think um, they got some real good content. So here's, <clears throat> um, you know, a typical cartoon kind of drawing. I forget the exact reference for this one. Um, you know, there's some typical definitions on here. This says X marks the spot if you look at the X, but um, that differs from, you know, others for sure. Um, this is interesting. This is in Penfield's um, book talking about petroglyph maps. They, you know, they say there's a geographic map with the spirals and lines and everything on the right there. You can pause and look at it and actually know where that petroglyph in the, in the picture is. Um, well, it's still in Penfield, you know, he's got some, um, you know, typical, typical, signs that you might see or think that you're going to see out there or, or try to make shapes into some definitions here and you know it's typical of a lot of authors to have kind of the exhaustive list of of uh i call them cartoon kind of cartoon characters uh this is from mahan i think um pictures of some coins and gold bars i guess it's pretty inspirational so um he's got that in there <clears throat> in addition to some you know lengths and measures and stuff um, this is sort of interesting also in Mahan, if I remember right, uh, is the different letters in Spanish through the, uh, the centuries. And, um, you know, authentic, authentic documents have a certain look and feel to them, and that's real important to get to understand. Um, here's some more um, signs and, and symbols, maybe still from Mahan. Um, this one has a little bit of a geometric, um, you know, kind of aspect to it as far as some distances versus shapes and things. Um, from Kenworthy's book here, we see, uh, you know, this kind of eye catcher thing that, you know, he says that they would kind of shape a rock that had a lot of quartz in it to kind of wink at you from a distance. And I actually have found one site that for sure has a, a thing like that. You can see it from six miles away. It's amazing. Um, here's a triangle kind of set up again from Kenworthy. Um, he's got, you know, basically dolmens, I guess you'd call them. I think you might call them compass rocks. So big rocks put up on little furniture kind of legs uh, with the third side being, you know, a different type. Um, I, I think a lot of Kenworthy's symbology is a little bit goofy here. You know, he says a circle with a dot is not Spanish for gold. I mean, that has been used as the symbol for gold alchemically and otherwise for forever. So I don't know where he got his information. Anyways, we're into the real pictures now. So 
Here's a, a dolmen from the field. Uh, this is pretty interesting because it was a pretty heavily occupied Spanish area. In, in this region, they also make tortugas, so they'll put a head on things like this too. So it's pretty interesting. I was looking back through the archives, saw this, and it's a good thing I had GPS for it because I had totally forgotten where I found this. Um, it's a real, real good spot and makes sense that it would be there, even potentially as a mine marker. This is sort of a uh, dragon petroglyph, maybe? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what else you'd call this. Um, you know, if you go back in time, you could slap around the, the people who are about to scratch and do graffiti on this stuff and, um, you know, hopefully in that practice forever. But this is a pretty interesting petroglyph from way down south. Not necessarily treasure related, but, um, you know, who knows? Maybe they saw a lizard monster or something. Kind of weird. Um, two crosses. So, you know, crosses kind of come in threes. So, you know, this to me says, look for the other cross. Usually the third cross is the bigger one. That's the father. And so um, you'd probably look up above here. This happened to be in a canyon system that was really washed out. And these crosses were pretty high up on the, on the wall of the, the slot canyon. So perhaps the canyon was, you know, had more gravel in it way back when, or I don't know how they would have climbed up there and done it otherwise. Um, this spot, you know, these kind of look like um, you know, large monuments that, you know, someone would maybe think, you know, were created, you know, we got like hawk face on the left and horse head on the right. I think they're entirely natural, but nonetheless interesting looking and maybe potential landmarks that were used for something. Uh, there's a neat site up Canyon from this particular spot, native site. Uh, this I think is just a total nature thing, even though it looks real neat. Um, these boulders are, this is down in southern New Mexico, um, real remote, um, desolate area. You know, around this area, there's, uh, th this rock area, you know, there were a lot of old, um, like big hand axes and like, um, hammer stones and burnt bone and all that kind of stuff. So I think it was just an old native occupation site, just some weird rocks to hang out at. This to me is definitely not natural. Um, it happens to be along, uh, a trail in a, uh, uh, kind of a side canyon from uh, a place that was a big east-west route on the Butterfield and uh, actually found a grave at the head of this canyon that's kind of a box canyon I think people get funneled in there and um, ambush from both sides or something um, I don't know what the markers for never figured that out this I think is totally natural this is um, in a place uh, called three little hills which matches up with um, a pretty good story um, but it's three little hills on the modern map and definitely not the three little hills from the treasure story that was written in like the 1600s. So very important, the name on the map now, not necessarily the name on the map then. So you got to be real careful. This is a, a, a marker rock, just a single rock on bedrock. Really shows from a distance, got a little light showing underneath it. Right next to it is an old, um, really old mine. Metal detected around it, absolutely no metal. Um, you know, that says it's pretty old and, um, the metal was, you know, super precious and not widely available. So nobody lost it, <laughs> you know, if they could, if they could help it. So just a single rock mark in that mine. Uh, this is a shrine. Uh, if you look, I, I don't know if I metal detected this or just took a real close look at the interior, but you know, there's no ashes, there's no bottle, you know, beer caps or any of that kind of stuff. And this is in a, uh, you know, a fairly dangerous spot, not too far from the Hornada del Muerto. And so these are typical of shrines you'll see down in um, that part of the country. There's nothing necessarily in it. I think they'd set their santos there. They'd pray for safety and away they'd go. Um, this particular mark is uh, in, the, in the very south tip of the Caballos, more or less. And, you know, this is the kind of thing where if you look at it, you say, well, you know, is that a surveyor's mark? It's maybe a quarter section. You know, it looks like a one divided by four, sort of. And, um, you know, I think you always have to be real careful if you're on a section line. then, um, Or if you find a mark or something interesting somewhere, always check to see if you're on a section line. Um, if we rotate this thing around a little bit, though, you know, it, it almost looks like a cross with a shadow. And maybe that's the creek. And there's something, you know, the side canyon across or... You know, who, who knows, um, the orientation of the rock, as I found it, is not necessarily orientation of the rock as it, as it originally was. Seems like a lot of effort to go through just for a section corner. A lot of times they just pile a few rocks and be done with it. This is a post-contact glyph, a guy on horseback. Um, this is not too far from a known, um, you know, massacre site. Uh, the Apaches, uh, I think it was, uh, might have been 1880. Um, broke out and uh, and you know caused some chaos and so you got a little bit of a 
ziggy zaggy aztec looking thing there and other petroglyphs in this area there's a monkey a petroglyph and a macaw petroglyph in that area too down south um, this is a pretty typical um, type marker for a mine i think you can't really see the tail on the arrow that well but there is actually sort of fletching on the right hand side and the left hand side there is a tip i've got some other pictures i couldn't find them that show it a little better in person it really stands out and there are some mines um, you know right downstream from where this is um, uh, barite but carry a little bit of gold this is an interesting one as far as a marker you know that somebody put um, they put a rock up in a tree um, it's not steep enough really for the rock to have rolled down in there it's not snow country right snow country you got to be careful because snow will put stuff up real high um, this is you know way down south um, in the florida mountains as a matter of fact and um, you know somebody stuck that rock there and that that pink granite comes from below this spot not above so that's another clue too uh, this is just your typical trail marker sort of used in modern times but also ancient times um, when i was growing up we did a lot of trail maintenance and trail uh, construction um, and uh, as, as a paid activity and you know put together old spanish routes um, in in the region um, partially looking for really faint blazes so this one's probably from the 1800s is my guess late 1800s um, this is a great setup um, happens to be in one of my favorite mountain ranges that chicken head looking thing there almost looks like uh, this guy named golem or mike um, who uh, found a little bag of coins in a mine. Um, he found a head like that on the left, and uh, it let, that and some other things led him right, right to his little, little bag of treasure. That knob on the right there, too, shows up in another spot that's pretty interesting. This is something that's maybe called the rabbit ears and the mule ears. Um, seems like New Mexico Expeditions or somebody did a, um, a video down near this uh, not too long ago. That's a site of uh, a lot of digging. <laughs> and uh, if you'll notice uh, other pictures I've got, you can see better that the rock on the left has actually been kind of propped up. So I think it was a natural formation that they added to, right? You're going to do the least amount of work that you have to. This is a, a little minor guy. This is along a really well-traveled trail along the Hornada. Um, kind of a side trail to water and um, this guy is kind of pointing in two directions um, unfortunately this rock was stolen by somebody some colorado guy i don't know anything else about him but the fact that he's you know took this with him is is pretty low um, please leave that stuff in place folks it, it doesn't do you any good at home it doesn't do anybody any good this is a cool map i think this is either in my little book or on the website um, this you know to me kind of documents an event where some people had to flee the church and some hid in the forest and some took a different route with some valuables and some other stuff and uh, kind of almost looks like a 1680 Pueblo Revolt um, documentary. It's on a kind of a real high cliff, uh, hard to get to spot, so it's hard to get pictures of that. Um, this is just a real simple, you know, X marker. Could be a claim corner, um, could be lots of things, could say, you know, that's the quadrant that they buried something in, or there, there is that one little dot on it. Um, don't know. There's a lot of good mining around there. This is down south um, in the Oregon Mountains, and um, there's for sure some silver in the area and also, um, you know, native gold that's been found down there too. Uh, this is just a flat rock. That limestone uh, occurs up above but um it was pr clearly put there for some reason um there's no way for it to kind of get there the shape it is so somebody found a nice flat rock that had a pointer on it and stuck it <clears throat> sort of in this crossroads in a valley um and i i did walk that out and metal detect a little but you know who knows if there's something a mile away i didn't go that far uh, and there's this iconic rock formation for those of you who know southern New Mexico is pretty obvious. Uh, and so um, we see in the foreground there a little marker. You know, when you're in and among a, a ton of boulders and weird looking rocks and all that, you know, you got to go way out of your way to make something obvious. Whereas if you're just on flat dirt or boring terrain, anything, you know, that you stand up will really stand out. Um, this I actually stuck in here for, uh, that, like I said, that Basinite guy. He's got a channel. Um, he had this amazing kill site, uh, you know, native hunting kind of setup that he had in one of his videos. Um, this particular little blind is just so you can watch the people going along the Butterfield, apparently. And um, that looks pretty much right down on where Massacre Gap is in, in Magdalena. So uh, here's a, this is an Arostra, not a super old one as a matter of fact, but thought I'd just throw in an Arostra. If you see one of these, you know, there's, there's mining nearby. Probably they wouldn't set this up until there was for sure some value. 
and who knows how quick they had to leave it. So, you know, look around for a pile of high grade because, of course, they'd take the good stuff over here to, to, to be crushed and, uh, and processed. And, uh, you know, you'll, <clears throat> you'll find those all over the place. And so this is um, uh, a map that a Spaniard in 1602 had a native guy draw. So the important part about this is that, you know, when you see these, you know, petroglyph panels and people try to say they're a map and this, that, and the other, I've always been super skeptical of that. But here you go. Here's a bunch of circles and lines connected between them, and some of the lines are squiggly for water and et cetera. Of course, all the script on there was put there by the, the captain whose name's in the text there, uh, the Spaniard guy. But th the native drew this as a map. So that was a, their way of representing you know, places and distances and all that kind of stuff. And, and so here's a glyph. I've been trying to get this over to, to uh, who's it, James Keenan, uh, the guy who's real big on vortexes and portals and, and uh, petroglyphs and stuff. This is just a real odd one. Never seen one like this before. Usually things come in fours, not threes, uh, with the cultures I'm uh, familiar with. So um, that's just a, a freebie at the end. So hope you guys had fun. We'll see you next time.